everyone, how's it going? Well, I'm in the 9250 and we're off to uh, disc a little bit of the peas. See how it's gonna work out there. I just came back, I'm just on my way back home for uh, disking uh, fire guard around the one barley field we had. Uh, apparently, they're gonna let us have a permit for agricultural purposes, so. I have to go run there and disc around the whole thing before they'll issue you the permit. So, uh, apparently, I guess it's too late for today, so they don't work on the weekend, so they're not coming till Monday. So now I can't work till Monday. So, I'm just uh, coming back and we're gonna go check out the bees. We'll be right back. Hey, Sean, what are you doing? Changing oil in which tractor? The next one, time. Okay, just so everybody knows. So what do you got? Full? Medium? Add? Full. Right on? A little bit old. Well, that's good because the oil filter is going to fill up too. Did you put any oil in the filter? Should have put a little bit in the filter and then screw it on. Actually, with, with that there, you could probably fill it full. It's not very messy, these ones. So we're just doing some maintenance here. I uh, blew out the rad. Actually, I washed it and then I blew it out. The rest. Air filter. I bought brand new air filters for this thing and they don't fit. And it says it's for this tractor. But they're like a quarter inch too long and I can't close the cover. Because the, the foam uh, piece on the end of the filter. Where is it? Here's the old one. This piece right here is too thick on the new ones. Oh, that one's dirty too. I've been blowing it out and it's still dirty. All that chaff and hay in there. But Sean uh, cleaned the cab out. And the windows too? Yeah. Oh, this window looks so dirty. I like to clean the Why? Just like oil only. Oh, because it's the canola. From crushing from the from the fan from the grain back. That's why you use the cleaner and just let it sit for a while. Anyway, I am uh, in the process of changing the filter on the 9270, and I've got the new one right here because because the tractor's only got a little over a hundred hours on it that I put on it last year. I am just changing the filter. I'm not changing the oil because the oil looks really good. I just had it out. It actually, it's not, it's not really black. Like you can see a tinge there, clear, so it's not bad. But I had trouble with this dipstick popping out. So I had trouble with this dipstick popping out here and uh, I was told that uh, the breather up there could be plugged and I cleaned that out. It really wasn't plugged so I think it's just this guy here is not is kind of stripped. So I'll have to keep an eye on that. The only other thing I got to change on here is the coolant filter. So I think that says, I, I write down all my hours on here but that black marker it uh, fades away, so I think that says 5311 hours, and it's got 6042 now, so I'm going to change that guy. And I just discovered that I've got this elbow exhaust pipe with a big hole in it. So I'm going to take that off and weld some sheet metal on there for now, and I'll have a new pipe ordered, and I'll change that, so... The only other things I gotta do is I'm going to change the the dryer for the air conditioning, dryer filter, and the expansion valve which is up there. And I should have a really good uh, really good air conditioning after that. Just the only thing that fixes that switch and everything. So and uh, yeah. <laughs>
oil pressure came back on. Oil pressure light went out. Well, this one's good to go. Right, Sean? Well, I'm just going to continue blowing out this uh, air filter. And uh, I'm going to see that new one. So I went, I went to the box and got the new filter out. It's, uh, it's not the foam, the damn filter is, is bigger. I don't know what those guys at the uh, case were thinking there, but I don't know. It's, I guess it was the number. Actually, this, this, just to clarify, this is not my case dealer. This is the case dealer down south, so. I have to take these back. I wonder if I can take them back here. Should be able to. It's all the same dealer. Okay, so I'm back. It's cold out here. Man, is it freezing. It's like only uh, seven degrees, but with the wind and cloud, it's cold. Right, Sean? You're cold? <laughs> I know, me too. Okay, so that one's ready to button back up. So you can put the sides on in the screen. I'm going back to my filters. So I usually put all Wix filters on here, uh, on everything, but the place where I get Wix filters in town are shut down because of COVID-19, and I could probably order them in, but they always had good stock, so I might be switching to different filters. I'll just write down the hours and the date. Ah, oh, maybe the hours. thousand forty two hours. So the next one I gotta change is this guy. Gonna get the small wrench. So here's my new cooler filter. Napa Auto Parts. So this is a coolant filter. And I never I didn't know they made this noise. I thought there was a bunch of junk in there but Apparently, that's the way they're supposed to sound, I guess. I guess. I don't know. Now...
think it takes up any fuel. So I was in the process of changing the air dryer down there and the expansion valve which was right there and when I took it off this was in the hose. Now that looks kind of like canola seed but I'd like to know how did that get in there. That's weird. That's a new one to me. It doesn't seem like canola because it's crunchy. It's almost like real rocks in there, but man, that almost looks like that silica gel salt or whatever the hell it is. You know, in those little packages. I'm wondering if that, that's weird. But this hose is plugged. I'm gonna have to blow it out so it hooks on down there to the, to the filter. So, what I've come to the conclusion here is this dryer I just took off, it has that, I'm pretty sure it has that uh, desiccant, what they call silica gel, and that's what those little balls are, because they were packed inside there, and I can't get them out, so this line is hooped, I'm going to have to get a new line, like I've tried blowing air through it, but they're they're packed in there and I tried uh, I even tried a, a coat hanger wire sticking it through there and that's as far as it goes so right about there somewhere where it's plugged and I've seen that before those things you cannot get them out so yeah I think I'm gonna need a new line now I do have the new dryer and the new expansion valve, so that that's what ended up being the problem was that guy loaded up. So I'm in the 1950 now, got her fired up, percolating. Tack doesn't work. Uh, just wait for her to warm up here a little bit. So I'm hooked up to the disc right here. Kind of got a little bit of a depth adjustment problem on this disc where the left hand side is going too deep the right hand side is not going deep enough so I noticed that there's these adjustments where am I 
these adjustment settings that I found that are on here, that side is missing. So I did change that one and that one. So I don't know if it's going to make a difference or not, but I'm going to go out on the peas and I'm going to disc around the whole perimeter again because I think I'm going to burn this stubble too. It is just not drying very well at all. Uh, we went, he, Dad went up to try to rake some straw there on that field where we had the barley and we bailed half of it and the other half is still there. It's still wet. Like I was there a week ago walking and it was wet and it's still the same right now. So it's just not drying very well at all. It's, I think it would be drier but it's not for some reason. So burning the stubble off is going to help. I can't burn the stubble up there, so that's gonna wait since he landed. So I'm gonna go work the perimeter around here. Well, we were working on the headlands here. A little bit damp. Some spots, but not bad here. soft in this corner here yeah starting to get a little muddy usually the water likes to run down this side of the field yep she's wet here that corner. She's wet there too. The nice thing about this year is the, the pea stubble is working in pretty good. That, uh, that high speed disc from uh, either Dagelman or uh, all the other manufacturers there, K-Line, Brightway, that would work pretty good on this stuff. Better than a uh, field disc. A lot of water in there. Stay away from that too. This is here. We're spinning. on the other side well we're just about on the last turn here and we're heading back so it's been actually not too it's it's a little bit wet on the sides like if I was pulling my air seeder through here I'd probably end up stuck in some of those spots but hopefully this will dry it out I don't think there'll be any areas in the middle of the field that'll be wet, but it's a uh, tractor is actually staying warm now, staying cool. I found that if I only run it at three quarter throttle instead of full throttle, kind of over revs a bit. So that might be a little bit of the issue. Was it wet here? Come on. always wet here. Always wet in that little spot. And this is pretty cold dry. 
thus fly in here. There, parked, ready to unhook. I'm gonna unhook the disc and hook up to the field cultivator, which is back there, ain't right? that green John Deere on there. So and I'm gonna head over to the other field across the road and I'm gonna go have some lunch first. So anyway, that's all for this video now. Uh, thanks for watching. Make sure you leave your comments down below and we'll talk to you all later. And don't forget to subscribe and like the video. See you later.